The Theta Z1 is the latest 360 camera from Ricoh. It's the only point and shoot 360 camera so far to feature two one inch sensors. It has a variable aperture of f2.1 to f5.6. I compared it side by side with its four main competitors. We'll find out shortly which camera won. The price as of launch day is $999 and that's kinda expensive. So you're probably wondering, is it worth that much money? Good question. I'll answer this by the end of the video. The Z1 shoots 23 megapixel photos, which is 6720 by 23... 3360. And the video is... 4K, but the image quality is much better than those numbers suggest. Here it is, and the design is really similar to the previous Theta models with the two big lenses on top, a long body, and the shutter button right there. It is a bit thicker than usual. This is because it has two one-inch sensors inside. It's also kind of heavy. I'd say this is about twice the weight of the previous Theta. And look, I get this, because the sensors are four times larger than the average 360 camera, you can't put that in a tiny little body. What I do like is that it's USB-C, it has a metal tripod adapter and it's the first Theta to have a screen. This is the best built-in screen I've ever seen from a 360 camera. Even in bright sunlight, you can see it just as brightly as shooting in shade. Four buttons here, on off, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, changing modes from photo to video. And the bottom one is function, where we can save presets if we like a certain exposure. We just press that button and it changes between our presets. Unfortunately, again, the battery and the memory are inbuilt. So there's no option to change either of those things. They haven't upgraded the memory since last time. So it's stuck with 19 gigabytes of storage. It's not a complete deal breaker, but it does make the camera kind of limiting. Overall, I give the design a thumbs up because there's more pros than cons, but something that has to be addressed is this camera is fragile. It feels like I'm holding a golden egg in my hands and if I slip and break it, there goes a thousand dollars. I mean, yes, all 360 cameras are like this, but look at how big those lenses are. This is something you really don't wanna break. And can you imagine if you did scratch the lens, you would cry yourself to sleep for three years straight. Don't use the Z1 without a tripod, a selfie stick, or without having it securely mounted to something. And if you're clumsy, don't even think about buying it. It's just an accident waiting to happen. But here's why you should buy it for the amazing image quality. No question, image quality is the biggest strength of the Theta Z1. The photos look absolutely incredible. After shooting a whole bunch of samples around the Sydney Opera House and my neighborhood, I can confidently say these are the best 360 photos I've seen out of a point and shoot camera under $1,000. This starts with the accurate and vibrant colors. The Theta cameras have always been known for their color accuracy and you get more of the same with the Z1. The blues of the sky look just like they do in real life. This is surprisingly rare to see from a 360 camera. Usually, either the sky will seem a bit washed out and murky, or it will be undersaturated and not looking as vibrant as the eye would see. The colors are really accurate with the Z1, not only with the sky, but with basically everything. If you get your exposure right, you're going to capture the colors of the scene in front of you as your eyes see it. Firstly, inbuilt HDR is back and it's as good as ever. It exposes the image really nicely with almost no blown out highlights or crushed shadows. You will need to keep your camera still for this to avoid camera shake and also you'll need to be aware of ghosting which is when there's movement in the scene and it shows up blurred because of a slightly slower shutter speed on one of the three exposures of the HDR which means you shouldn't use HDR when there's people around unless you stand really still. Jeez. Or if it's super bright out, the shutter speed shouldn't go that slow. I'd say my favorite feature of the Theta Z1 is raw mode. This is the best raw I've seen from any point and shoot 360 camera, and it's starting to give us 360 shooters what we've been missing, which is DSLR-like raw. There have been a whole bunch of other 360 cameras that have offered raw, but they've never been anywhere near the level of a DSLR. The shutter recovery has been maybe like 10%, and the highlights, you can maybe bring them down 10 or 15%. But if you're shooting raw on a DSLR, you can bring up the shadows like 10,000% and the highlights down 10,000%. Okay, maybe not that much, but you get the point, it's way more. With the Z1, I found the raw to be about half as good as a DSLR, if not more, especially in the shadowy areas. I was watching a video on YouTube the other day about the Z1 by some guy, I forget his name, but he showed off this technique where he underexposed his images and brought them up five stops in in Lightroom to make it a perfectly exposed image. So I went out and tried this myself and it worked. I was able to turn a completely underexposed 
overexposed image to the point that it looked pure black and I was able to raise the brightness far enough that it looked like a properly exposed image with not that much noise. That's what DSLRs do. I found the highlight recovery to not quite be as impressive as the shadow recovery, but it's still decent. You can still bring it back about two stops, which really makes this the perfect camera for mixed lighting interiors, AKA virtual tours. Combine this with really impressive sharpness, which looks much sharper than 23 megapixels and the ability to shoot bracketed shots. And this becomes the best camera for 360 photographers in mid 2019. A 360 camera having a variable aperture is a really rare thing in 2019. And the Theta Z1 gives you three options to choose from. F2.1, F3.5, F5.6. And if you were shooting this with a DSLR, what would that mean? Well, firstly, you would get more light, so the overall shot would be brighter, but also it means your depth of field changes. The wider your aperture is open, the shallower the depth of field becomes. So you might be thinking, does this finally mean we can get shallow depth of field 360 shots? Well, no. I did a test of all three side by side and not only was there no difference in the depth of field, but the reason they're doing this is because they claim it increases sharpness when you go down with your aperture. Looking at these three here side by side, I can confirm they look exactly the same. Maybe I'm not doing something right. Maybe they're going to update the firmware to allow for this. But for now, the variable aperture is just another setting you can change to adjust your exposure, which is still good. The more settings, the better. The low light shots out of the Z1 are really incredible. Not only can you shoot in pitch black and get a properly exposed image, but you can shoot in any kind of mixed lighting situation you like and it will be able to deal with it. Whether you just wanna shoot in HDR rendering mode, whether you wanna set the exposure manually and do a long exposure, or if you wanna combine that with RAW and adjust the exposure later, no matter what kind of low light situation you're in, it will do a good job. This is helped by the one inch sensors. Not only is the exposure good, but if you get your settings right, there'll be very little noise. Noise. Look at that, I see stars. The stitching is pretty good as usual. If you have any issues, you can adjust them manually in the Ricoh Theta Stitcher plugin for Lightroom. Now let's talk workflows. And if you're just shooting in JPEG, then a phone is fine. You can do everything you need to do in JPEG on your phone. However, if you're gonna take things to the next level and shoot in RAW, you will need one of these because RAW doesn't work on this thing yet. With editing your RAW files, you're going to need some kind of paid software, either Lightroom, Photoshop, or PT GUI. Yeah, I know that's a funny name. <laughs> so with Lightroom, there's a plugin called Rico Theta Stitcher and it's only compatible with Lightroom Classic, not the newer Lightroom. All you need to do is import your double fish eyes, edit them, and when you're ready to export and stitch, right click, go edit in, Rico Theta Stitcher. You can download this plugin for free from the Rico site. I'll link it down in the description. This opens up the plugin. You can see the image is stitched. You can change the horizon. And one cool thing about this is you can also change the stitching. So if it's not perfect, you can play around with it and get it working the way it should. Hit OK and you have a stitched RAW file. If you prefer to edit in camera RAW inside of Photoshop like me, you can do that. Simply open your DNG in Photoshop now make your edits as you normally would. Now you will still need a Lightroom subscription to do this. This is a workaround that I don't even think Rico know about. I just discovered it myself, but it does work. So you simply just drag your JPEG into the Rico Theta Stitcher app and it will stitch the double fish eyes instantly, just like it did with Lightroom. The final method is with PT GUI, and if this is your software of choice, it already has a Theta Z1 stitching template, so it will do everything for you pretty quickly. Unfortunately, at this point in time, I haven't found any free stitching options. I will update the description if this changes. I feel like this review is missing some, oh yeah. I haven't talked about video. And that was kind of intentional because this is not really a feature of the Z1. I mean, yes, technically it does shoot 360 video, it's 4K and it actually looks pretty decent, but with only 19 gigabytes of memory, this fills up the entire card in like 20 minutes and it's 4K. 5.7K is the standard in 2019, so that's not good enough. The two or three things the video has going for it is one, the dynamic range, it's good, like it's always been for photos and videos. It has basic videos. It has basic video stabilization, nothing like what we're used to, but it's okay. And it has spatial audio, yay. Oh, well, actually no, because the video is kind of useless. So why do you need spatial audio? I think it goes without saying, this is not a 360 video camera. If you're into 360 video, there's another camera that's the obvious choice. I'll tell you which one that is in just Oh, damn it. Firstly, I wanna show you this comparison I did between the Theta Z1, 
Theta V, GoPro Fusion, Xiaomi Mi Sphere, and Insta 360 One X. These are the four most requested cameras to compare it to, so I chose a difficult mixed lighting scene to do this. Welcome to my apartment. I have a kind of dark interior and an extremely bright exterior that extends all the way out to views of Sydney City. Capturing this properly would be hard for any camera, including a DSLR, which is why I put these five cameras to the test. With each one, I did the best I possibly could to make it look good. With some cameras, I used RAW. With some, I used HDR. I'm not using bracketing here. I wanted to test what I could get in one single shot. What I'm looking for here is the most even exposure inside and out, no blown out highlights, no shadows too dark, and consistent colors, all of which the Mi Sphere does not have in this high contrast scene. The Fusion is an improvement and the colors are looking much better. However, I still see pure white outside in the sky. Next is the Theta V using HDR rendering and that looks so much better. This is a properly exposed image and the colors are looking pretty nice. I'd honestly be happy using this in a virtual tour. Here's the One X in raw mode and I was kind of disappointed by this. The highlights are way too blown out for this to be usable. Put the camera in HDR mode however and it's a different story. This looks great and overall it passes the test. Next is the Z1 built in HDR and this is a great image. The colors look good. The overall exposure here is good. However, I'm going to be knocking out this image because the next image takes place of this and that is the raw photo taken with the Theta Z1. This is by far the best image of everything we've just seen. The exposure is consistent across the entire image. The exterior is perfectly exposed. And when I shot this, it was the brightest part of the 10 minutes I was shooting these photos and it still did the best job. When you zoom in on the three finalists, the noticeably sharper city skyline of the Z1 is what crowns it the winner in my eyes. Okay, so the Z1 is best for photos, but you might be wondering, what about its closest rival, the One X? How does it compare all around to the Z1. How do they line up and which one is the better overall camera? Now I know I already declared the Z1 the best camera for 360 photos, but since the One X is the most popular camera right now, I just want to be sure. So I took them both out for coffee. Yeah, I think this is like my third or fourth coffee of this video. We should just call this video Ben goes out for coffee with his cameras. Hashtag forever alone. But this time I want to look a little bit closer at the differences. Here are both cameras in HDR mode and when zoomed out, there are barely any differences differences between them. They both look great. Well, I would say the Z1 has slightly better colors and contrast straight out of the camera. I've not touched either of these images, but you can always color correct your 1X shots, so it's not a deal breaker. Now let's zoom in really close on this grid. And now the difference is night and day. The Z1 is so much clearer. The dots are all perfectly round and dark, whereas they're pretty inconsistent and blurry with the 1X. Let's look at another area just to be sure. And yeah, the Z1 is better in basically every way. And look, I'm being picky, but it's my job to be picky. Now here's the raw version from first glance. The Theta Z1 looks better because as we know by now, RAW isn't really the strength of the One X. I would like to use this opportunity though to zoom in on another less busy part of the image. And when you look at the ceiling side by side, there is much less noise with the Z1, whereas the One X is producing quite a bit of chroma noise. I think this is a perfect example of what you might be shooting in a virtual tour. And as you can see, the Z1 is a good 20% better than the One X at a lot of things. And those numbers add up if your aim is to shoot super high quality 360 photos. The One X came in honorable second and I'd still say these photos are usable. When we change the cameras into video mode, I think you know what the result's gonna be. The One X absolutely destroys the Z1. It's not even close, the One X wins at everything. It also wins for price, $400 versus 1,000 is a pretty big difference. So here are the main differences I see between them. They're both amazing cameras and you won't be disappointed with either, but you can only buy what you can afford. Oh, and by the way, they've both got super fast workflows. Last week I asked you guys on Facebook and Instagram what you wanted to know about the Z1 and I got hundreds of questions. So now I'll answer the best ones in under 10 seconds each. Does it still have that annoying red dot? Yeah, the red dot of doom is basically gone. I haven't seen it in any of my shots yet. Fingers crossed that continues. How long does the battery last? It's about an hour, but if you're shooting 360 video, it will drain super fast. So avoid video if you can. Oh, uh, hey, Mr. Ben. I was wondering, does it come with a brand new app? It's the exact same app as before. Nothing's changed. Can I plug it into power? Yes. How much space do the photos take up? With 19 gigabytes, you can shoot roughly 2,400 JPEGs or 350 raw photos. And then you have to download and wipe the card. 
Not ideal. Hey bro, does it still have that nasty chromatic aberration? It's definitely still there, but it's much better than before. If you're familiar with Lightroom or Photoshop, you'll know how to remove it in seconds. How close can you get to the side of the camera without getting stitched out and looking funny? About a foot. Is it Google Street View compatible? Yes, yes it is. Can you live stream? Yes, in 4K. Can you shoot time lapses? Yes. Um, yes, Mr. Ben, hi. I just wanted to know why the camera is so damn expensive. Because they're trying to scam people, that's why. <laughs> I don't know, it's obviously not cheap to put two one inch sensors inside a small 360 camera, as well as those two really good high quality lenses. That's my guess. Rico are definitely due for a new camera. I can't say when, I have no idea when, but I'm pretty certain it is going to happen soon-ish. So that was my prediction. Yes, it was right, but also wrong. I didn't really anticipate a camera quite like this that isn't in the same category as the other cameras. This is now a middle of the range camera, whereas before it was more for consumers. That's really what I was anticipating in that video. And we don't have that yet. I wouldn't call this a camera for consumers because of the price. There's no getting around it. $1,000 is a lot of money and this won't be an easy purchase for anyone. I held a poll on Instagram stories yesterday asking if you guys would pay $999 for a 360 camera even if it gave you $999 worth of results. And the results were pretty interesting. After 550 votes, 39% of you said yes, 61 no. So the question isn't really, is it worth the money? Because it is, but the question is, even if it is worth the money, are you willing to pay that? At this point, it seems that most people aren't, but that's okay because it's not for everyone. This is a camera for up and coming virtual tour photographers. If 360 photography is your focus, this is going to be the best option for you. And if you have clients and you're charging for your work, you could charge that little bit extra for the extra capabilities of the Z1. No question, you could make your money back pretty quickly with this camera. Look, it's not for high-end virtual tour photographers who use a DSLR and a pano head, but it's for people in the middle of the range, shooting medium-sized businesses, small to medium-sized, but you want the most professional result possible from a point-and-shoot 360 camera. It's not for shooting video, so if you're someone that shoots 80% plus photo, then you should consider it. But if you're 50-50, you like shooting video as much as photo, get the One X because it does a good enough job. And as we saw before, it has superior video quality. This is a camera for social media content and basic virtual tours. This is not a social media camera, but the focus is virtual tours. I know $999 is a lot, but this camera is worth it, especially if you're using it professionally. It's worth it and not a dollar more or less. When I look at a camera like this, the reason I've been talking about it for so long is this is a $400 camera and it is actually worth more than what they're charging. I feel like the One X legitimately gives $999 worth of value with its amazing 360 video capabilities, extremely impressive photo capabilities. So the One X is the kind of camera that over delivers, whereas the Theta Z1 delivers. At 2.5 times the price, it's not 2.5 times as good as the One X, it's more like 1.5 times as good just for photos. The reason I call this video the DSLR of 360 cameras is if you think about conventional photography, somewhere you might start might be a phone, and if you say take good photos with your phone, you like photography, you might buy something like a GoPro, which then helps you get a slightly better result and you get even more into photography. And after you've used your GoPro for a few months or a few years, you're like, hey, I'm ready to upgrade to a DSLR. And then you go out and buy your first DSLR and even though it's not cheap, you're like, wow, oh my God, this thing is so cool. These images are like professional. It's like I'm a professional photographer. Even though you've only used it for a few days and you're obviously not, but it gives you the ability to become one with enough practice. The Theta Z1 is the DSLR compared to the other 360 cameras. It's a lot more expensive and it's significantly better. But you've kind of got to be shooting 360 content professionally to justify the price. This is not a camera for Instagram. I'd also describe the Z1 as the midpoint between a point and shoot 360 camera and a high-end DSLR on a pano head. If you have any questions about the Z1, leave them in the box below. I'll also put links to the Z1, the One X, and everything you've seen in this video down there. I have a whole bunch of samples from the Z1 on my Facebook and Instagram page, so be sure to check them out if you're curious to see what the 360 photos look like. There's also a Facebook page for the camera. You might want to join it. By the way, I've got a little secret to share. You can't tell anyone, but Right now, as we speak, I'm working on my very next video course. It's going to be called A Beginner's Guide to Virtual Tours. It's probably going to take me months to create, but my goal is to make the best, most in-depth video course ever made about virtual tours that will help you get started from taking your very first shot to getting clients and earning money from your virtual tours. It'll be out 
before Christmas. So hit that subscribe button so you can be the very first to hear about it when it's ready, whenever it's ready. And yeah, I'd like to make more virtual tour content in the near future. Now I've got an excuse to do so, got an awesome camera. So you can expect that from my channel soon. That's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.